You learn to a life transforming experience as Pastor Prince Abba brings you God's word with deep insight and power. God bless you. This morning we will focus on a very important subject, and it's going to. I'm going to try to make it a series uh, because you need to gain understanding on how on the mysteries of the blood of Jesus actually we're supposed to have communion this morning but at the point I said the communion should wait till next Sunday so I can teach today I want you to have understanding before we do communion by next Sunday but I think last Thursday we had communion service it was explosive how many of you were here last Thursday it was an explosive service my job this morning is to help you to you may you may do well to get the tape of last um, the tape of last the tape of last Thursday you may do well to get it and listen to it it will help you I have many tapes also online on YouTube that um, did some justice to the subject of the blood of Jesus I don't want to go back to the, those foundation lane. You can go back to the YouTube and do some follow-up on uh, what I taught on the mysteries of the blood and uh, the power of the blood. There are tapes like that. What I want to do this morning is more or less an application of the blood. I want to help you know how you can apply the blood in your life. The scripture says in the book of Revelation that we overcame the devil. We overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. And by the words of our testimony the blood of jesus was not just shed on the cross so you can be free from sin that's one of the things the blood of jesus did but more than that the blood of jesus was also shed so you can have an instrument with which you overcome the blood of jesus is an instrument for the believer to overcome there's something that is very powerful about the blood the blood saves the sinner from sin the blood also saves the saved from whatever so the blood of jesus is so powerful and potent that it can redeem man from his sin but aside that it's so powerful that even after you are saved you need it for your daily living if you want to be an overcoming christian if you want to be a victorious christian especially in this age where so much is go- going on especially in this generation where the devil is on the loose all kinds of crises going on everywhere emergencies and all kinds of things happening people don't understand what is going on with with life anymore you need the instrument of the blood because how you will overcome in the midst of all the things that are shaking the world today is the blood of jesus you see in revelation let me let me even start there before i get to my slide show me revelations chapter 6 start from verse 1 let me show you something about the last days that's why christians who have the scriptures inside them will escape the problems of this time no matter what is happening you won't get them because they are equipped with knowledge you see the bible said that my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge anything you don't know is bigger than you whatever you don't know has the power to destroy you it has the power to destroy you what you don't know can destroy you what you don't know can keep you limited that's why knowledge the bible says the entrance of the word it gives it light knowledge is light revelation is light when you have revelation of the word it can help you escape what others are victims of hmm? hello that's why this end time equip yourself with the bible equip yourself with the bible because this is the only book that guarantees escape for you this is the only book that is updated through history throughout generations past throughout history this book still remains current you can read a book on economics today and in five years time the principles are outdated you can read a book on um, business today or a book on finance or whatever and the principles they are teaching you there in few years to come outdated but the principles of this world are constant they can you can't improve on them through generations this book of the law 
has been the most potent book ever. Now, let me show you something. We have a new government in Nigeria, for instance. And um, I remember during the campaign, there was a rush. Everybody was rushing here, rushing there. You had three major candidates, you know, the PDP, APC, and the Labour Party. And everybody had their own, okay, I'm obedient. This one said it's a Milokon. The other one said it's this. And everybody had their own roots. There was a certain day I was talking with someone and I was asking him, who will you vote for? He said, I'm going to vote for Obi. I said, why? He said, because Obi is going to change the country. I said, you are lying. I said, do you know why we are frustrated in this country? We put too much of hope in men. You think that man will deliver you from your political issues, your economic problem. Sir, it's a lie. If Obi won presidency, even if tribunal now rules against the current president and says Obi now become president you'll be so shocked it will take the man so much to steer the country and the country will not even change like you are thinking in eight years I'm, I'm a political analyst I can tell you what I know hello <laughs> so you'll be so shocked that if Obi had entered the distance and removed subsidy the way Tinibu did because he was also going to remove subsidy the price of where we still skyrocket. And a lot of people would have been so disappointed. In fact, the disappointment would have been more than the one you are facing now. Because at the end of the day, the whole thing will be, ah, ah. but we thought we were obedient. We thought this is the desire. How come the fire has gone up under? And that's where frustration begins. You see, David was a king of Israel. And he said, I will look up to the mountains from where come my help. He said, my help only comes from the Lord who made the heaven and the earth. The guy was king. He had money and everything at his beck and call. But he knew at the point in his life that there are times the economy will fail. There are times the government will fail. There are times your military arsenals will fail. What will not fail is this God of heaven. I will look up to God. I will look up to God. In times where things are shaking, that's where you look up to. You don't look up to, the, to your uncle, look up to your friends, look up to the government. It can be devastating. This is why a lot of Christians are not enjoying God anymore. They're not enjoying life anymore. Christians. Because you don't understand what is going on. What is going on is that where you are expecting help from, help can't come from there. Am I talking to people here? Ah, you need to open your ears and hear me let me give you a description of some of the things happening in the last days. Look at Revelation. What John saw will be happening in the end time. And he's already with us now. See what is going to happen. After this one, I think there's another scripture you will show. Where he says, if I shake the heavens and all that, you know, okay, I saw shakings in the heaven and um, all that. You'll find it. It's somewhere in one of the Gospels. Look, but let me read this one first. Now I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals... And I heard one of the four living creatures saying with a voice like thunder, come and see. So look at what he began to see. And these things are happening now. Watch this. And I looked and behold a white horse. He who sat on it had a bow and a crown was given to him. And he went out conquering and to conquer. Okay. When he opened the second seal, I heard the second living creature said, Come and see. Another horse, fiery red, went out and it was granted to the one who sat on it to take peace from the earth. Are you seeing that someone is assigned to do this job? There's a spirit that is in charge of ensuring that there's chaos on the earth. Take peace from the earth. And that people should kill one another. So when you see explosions, you see banditry, you see fights, you see terrorism. This is the prophecy that is coming to pass. He said, and there was given to him a great sword. This thing must happen. Because it's documented here, it must happen. But there's an escape plan. There's an escape route. Yes, the next one. When he opened the third sea, I heard the third living creature saying, come and see. So I looked and behold, a black horse. Because of time, I will show you what the colors represent. Of course, the red horse, you see, represents blood, death, killings. 
Then this one now is a black horse. And he who sat on it had a pair of scales in his hand. Black in economics actually represents capitalism. Hmm? Capitalism. Capitalism started with the evolution of slavery, slave trade. Now that's where you find the history of capitalism. So when you see the color black, it comes from the slave trade era where the uh, Europeans, the white guys came here and took black people to go and work in their plantations in the overseas. So black guys were majorly the ones generating income, generating money for the white guys on their plantation. They were in Texas, they were in Virginia, they were in different part of the, you know, in different fields and plantation, working their farm, tilling their farm and growing crops and making money for them. While the guys were enjoying their life, the black guys were in the farm, some were in the mines and all that. So, the color, the, 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 the color black symbolizes capitalism because it's a system of government where one man owns the means of production. Are we in school this morning? Capitalism, right? It's just a kind of system of economy where one man starts a business and employs different modes of production to generate revenue, generate profit. So he employs his labor. He gets his company, builds it, gets the land, builds it, whatever. He runs the business. The business is not owned by the government. It's owned by an individual, a proprietor, a sole proprietor. Hmm? Though the government might regulate the economy or the business environment where he's doing business through policies and laws like taxation and all that, all right? Uh -huh. But the business is not owned by the government. For instance, there's another mode of economy called socialism all right uh, that is another system of economy where the means of production is completely in the hands of the government all right uh, but this time in capitalism the major mode of production resides in the hands of individuals and that's the major economy that is running the world like nigeria runs capitalism runs a capitalist system all right the government only serves as a regulatory body they don't have business with business. It's individuals who do business, generate money, then pay tax to the government. That's what you call capitalist economy. The same thing is run in America. Okay? Capitalism first had its popularity in, the, in America. Socialism, which is a welfareist system of government, where the government is in charge of the welfare of the people. They produce everything and then they distribute the resources to the farm to the to the citizens of their country they provide everything that people need like water light and all that they distribute resources because the government produces everything themselves okay why the people work maybe as civil servants as public servants or whatever but in capitalism is not so the people have to go and do their business they are free to run their business you can even own a nepa company if you want to own as an individual all right, like this, your e e e d c is that what they call it? This is a no good uh, electrical distribution company. I hope you know it's owned by an individual. It's not owned by government. Government only regulates. It's owned by a person. Is that a maker for whatever his name is? I think that's the guy they say owns it. Is that correct? So the problem with capitalism is that usually prices of commodities and services usually are detected by the owners of the business and sometimes it can be exorbitant anyway let's not do economics this morning um what i'm trying to say is that this black horse stands for capitalism and the idea is that when this season comes for this guy to start riding what he's going to do is to turn the economy upside down what he's going to do is to bring in recession into the economy. What that guy is going to do on that horse of economy is to bring in hardship into the system. Am I teaching here? So the black horse with the guy who sat on it, see what he was carrying? A pair of scales. I hope you know pair of scales symbolizes is also another symbol of economy. Hmm? Hmm? Uh -huh. You see a scale with a hook up here Then you have one plate here and one plate here so you want to buy um 
you want to buy rice for instance they measure rice and put on this scale and they see what it weighs they put on the scale then they put some money this other way okay and if the thing balances you know the trade by butter error okay <laughs> if the thing balances that's the amount of money you're paying for this okay so they, they, you put food here or put whatever item you're buying on the scale that's the old way they used to do it though. and then they put certain amount of money here until there's balance between both you can determine effectively the price of the commodity they still do it here now for instance there are some places you go to to buy groceries buy uh, fruits like i go to roban store or i go to um uh, shop right to buy fruits buy items sometimes they will take the apple they will tie it and they'll put it on the scale and the thing will read and read and read and show the amount of money hmm? i can t- pick three apples now and they'll tie it and put it on the scale and person will pick three apples and our prices will be different it's not the number it's the weight so that's what they used to do those days they use the weight of the commodity to determine the price of the commodity so that's what the scale thing here so he held the pay of scale in his hands now you should expect in an economy where things are working that the forces of demand and supply everything going on should be at a, an equilibrium hmm? you should be paying for something and what you're paying for is what is worth it hmm? for instance if your shirt is worth 1000 naira i should pay 1000 naira equilibrium the price of the commodity and the commodity should meet at an equilibrium all right hmm? the forces of demand and supply should not be at this there shouldn't be a disparity in prices and goods so for instance where people are complaining now about petrol is that petrol ordinarily should be within a certain price 200 one something like we know it hmm? they even say we now have refinery now that we have refinery and we're not expecting that petrol should go down and the thing is going up and all that so now people are complaining this is not supposed to be so we own oil in nigeria what about countries that don't own oil and their petrol is very cheap for reason cement we're buying cement five thousand now or so eh? and we own refinery we own what do you call it cement production plants in nigeria what about ghana that doesn't have that good selling cement to ghana and the Ghanaians are buying cement for 2,000 something naira. I even heard one time it was 1,600. That's in naira, they have their cities. Anyway, now they will talk about the issue of currency. You see what devaluation of naira is doing to the economy. And I'll tell you where the naira got devalued because the naira used to be stronger than the dollar. America was smart enough to get IBB to destroy the naira by devaluing the naira when IBB approached uh, uh, america through the imf imf is called international monetary fund and the world bank to request for loans so that they could invest in the economy and all that these guys gave nigeria what i call seven stringent conditionalities for assessing loan and one of the conditionality was you have to devalue your currency beat the naira down to nonsense so that the dollar will have more power than the naira. But of course, IBB does not know economics, so he didn't know the implication of that. Hmm? So he, he agreed to the term. Number two, open your border for importation of all kinds of things. So what that did was that production in Nigeria was exterminated, was killed. And then the other countries of the world, like America, boosted their economy by production and they found the ready market in africa and nigeria to export their goods to so the issue of producing was discouraged in this country by opening the borders even nigeria that used to produce rice that have agriculture was 75 percent of our gross domestic products our gdp 75 percent of our gdp it was agriculture that was bringing the money palm produce cocoa and the rest of them our plantations our soil was so arable and so fertile that it gave this country so much of money before the oil boom of the 70s so the issue now is a country that used to be so rich through agriculture shut down the agricultural sector because this time we're going to be importing food from other countries why because our borders had to open for exportation there are five more i won't show you because of time because that's what i came here to do now so you see economy has gone upside down 
because this agent sitting here that's the job he came to do to make sure he scatters economy so what you buy for one thousand for instance you will be buying it for costlier than one thousand yet the real what is one thousand i produce water at the cost of 50 naira and i'm selling the water at the selling price of 1000 so the bourgeoisie or the capitalist is making more money and those who are buying are not finding even the money to buy it's like those who are in civil service can tell you better prices of things are going up but their salaries are not increasing and then when your salaries are not increasing and price of things are going up the money in your hand cannot chase too many commodities it's as useless as useless hmm? if they were increasing cost of living increasing price of things and also increasing standard of living maybe people will not be complaining the problem is that cost of living is increasing standard of living is at the same level now that's what is going to happen look at it now let me show you show me verse verse, verse six you will see now that what is going to what is happening here now is that cost of living will go high standard of living will remain the same and i heard a voice in the midst of the four living creatures saying a quart of wheat for a dinaros you can imagine should i explain what the dinaros is now here okay let me just use this now, what do you mean by a quart in the first place? Quart, yes, yeah, quarter. Hmm? A quart of wheat. So, what you used to buy for one dinaros before? One wheat. Hmm? A dinaros. Let's use one naira or one dollar. Okay? One wheat like this. When the economy was good, this time, what this agent of darkness is out to do is to take one wheat and divide it into four so i used to buy one bowl of wheat or one pack of wheat for one dollar just one pack of wheat one dollar when economy goes upside down you know what i'm going to do now i'll take the same one bag of wheat divide it into four and buy for the same one dollar i love the bible so much because if it shows you what is happening already I don't know how many of you have seen that even some things you used to, for instance, I bought one drink one time. Hmm? Drink that used to be full. They used to reach the bottle top. You buy it now, they have removed small out of it. Hmm? There are some things you buy. You, you, you know what the thing used to taste like before. You buy it now. The taste is gone. Chivita that used to be the pride of everyone. Now you buy Chivita. How many of you know how Chi Exotic used to taste before? Chi Exotic used to be rich. The color used to be very, very dark. Hmm? When you drink it, you think it's coconut you're, you're taking. Now, you open, you shake the thing, open. The water is almost like water. The color is almost like water. The Chi is still there. The exotic has gone. Amen, somebody? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because in this time, what is going to be that? Quality of commodities will drop. Quantity will drop. That's why the last time you bought your geisha, as you opened it, there used to be up to six fish inside before. Now you open it, they put plenty of oil inside, and then they put only two short, short fish inside for you. It's a quart of wheat for a dinaros. That's what is happening. He's reduced everything. <laughs> Just <laughs> reduce everything now so that and the funny thing is that they are reducing it and they are selling for the same amount. Now I'm coming for higher, don't worry. I'm showing you the first part. There's a second part. So see the second part. It's a, a quart of wheat for a dinaros and three quarts of barley for a dinaros. Eh? Hello, somebody. So three quarts is what? Eh? Three quarters, that's three over four. Eh? One quart, a quart is one over four. All right? Then three quart is three over four for a dinosaur. So this one is a barley now. It's another commodity he's talking about. So what used to be one barley selling for one dinosaur, get it now, take three out, take one away. The, that one that is three. 
Hmm? Divide everything into four. Take one away. And the one that is three, sell it for the same amount. Hmm? So what is happening there is that there's shortage. Are you not seeing it now that you buy some drinks? They have removed one quart away. And you have three quarts. Hmm? That's what he's talking about. So like you rightly also said, the price is constant. The things are reducing. If they want to keep the commodity the same, they increase price. If they want to keep the price the same, they reduce the are you seeing the trick? In the economy, the economy, that's what they do. They want to read even cement, buy cement now. You see, it's not as full as it used to be. They just blow, 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 blow air inside the bag and reduce it. They, because you are complaining, the cement is going high, they will bring the price down. You will be rejoicing. But they will go to the factory and reduce the quantity. So you, sometimes you're not able to tell that one. But it's the same force they are using. The same is just different gimmicks, but the scheme is the same. They reduce the quantity of the goods and keep the price at a favorable level. You think that you're buying the same thing? No. In most cases, they retain the quantity of the goods and increase the price. So when they study the market and see the market doesn't like increase in price, they try everything to, okay, let's maintain this level, but reduce. Like pig milk, the searchers one may not go beyond where it is now. How much is it? One hundred what? One hundred twenty-nine. But watch, they will keep reducing the content. Pig milk has reduced content inside. Hmm? And then people are wondering, what kind of thing is this? What are, what are we passing through? Why are we going through all this thing? I'm telling you what is happening. There are invisible forces that are responsible for the economy. It's not CBN governor. CBN governor will sit on that seat. Oh. The people is economics, professor of economics and all that. But at the end of the day, there are forces you don't see. Riding these horses, ensuring that even the best professor gets into the, 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 the office, he cannot regulate the economy, he can't get things done. So, for we now who are Christians, this end time is not running helter skelter that will save us, it's not going to carry placard and be asking the CBN governor to make sure there's money in circulation. Hmm? It's not going around and begging people and say, "Oh, please, oh, uh, bank, let more money be in circulation, or oh, reduce the price." All we are saying, reduce the price. All we are saying, increase our pay. All we are saying, where the coppers in the house, increase our alawi. Eh? I feel for coppers a lot sometimes because the alawi have they increased anything for you guys? It's still the same, and that's how you guys will finish. Nothing will happen. Amen, somebody? Uh-huh. The thing I'm saying here is that it's not an error to begin to jump up and down and carrying placards and saying increase our pay, increase our economy, increase this. No. See what God says. The escape route for the believer will be. Listen carefully. I'm laying the foundation for what I want to show you. He said, and do not harm the oil and the the oil and the the oil and the now the oil stands for the Holy Spirit hmm? the oil is not the Holy Spirit the oil only represents the Holy Spirit the wine is not the wine you drink the wine represents the blood remember at the Passover the communion where Jesus was about to do the last supper with his disciples before he went to the cross he gave them a cup to drink and he said this is my blood. That blood he gave them was not his real, it was not his very real blood. He didn't pierce his hand or pierce his body and then put a, a, a conduit pipe and then began to draw blood. No. He didn't call a doctor to put syringe in his hand and draw blood. No. They were not occultic people. It wasn't real blood. It was wine he gave them. Alright? And that wine, he used it to illustrate his blood that he was going to go and shed on the cross so this wine they are talking about here is not the ever wine or the pure heaven you drink it's not the metallinous wine you drink this wine they are talking about here is the blood of jesus what the bible is saying that the people who will escape all the onslaught of the devil in this end time from verse one of that scripture all the way to verse six the people who will escape the four horsemen are those who are sealed 
by the Holy Spirit are marked by the blood of Jesus. I'm not talking to the right people here, maybe. Hello, somebody. Those who are sealed by the Holy Spirit, which is the oil, and those who are marked by the blood of Jesus. If you see what happened with Moses in the Old Testament, the same way that Jesus shed his blood and used wine as an illustration before he went to the cross, that was the same thing that God told Moses to do in the Old Testament. Remember, before Moses and the Israelites left Egypt, God told Moses to kill a lamb and take the blood of the lamb and put it on the doorpost of every Israelite in Egypt. Because that night, the angel of death was going to go all over the land of Egypt. Amen, somebody. And what that angel is going to be going to do is the same thing that these four horsemen are doing now. You are seeing the four horsemen in the New Testament, but they also existed. One of them also, that angel of death, if you see here, he said he had a great sword. He went to go and kill people in Revelation. But in the Old Testament, you see him also with a great sword, an angel carrying a sword, and his assignment was to go and kill people that night. And then God now told Moses, the way he's telling the New Testament church now, because the patterns are the same. The principles are always the same. Hello. When you study the Bible like I do. See, study the Bible understanding that the Bible is full of patterns. Hmm? Whatever you read in the Old Testament, go to the New Testament, you'll find the same pattern playing out. That's why the Old Testament is a type and shadow of the New Testament. And this is also why Jesus said he didn't come to destroy or abolish the Old Testament. He only came to fulfill it. What it means is that in the Old Testament, we were doing things on based on shadows. Things were communicated in shadows and in type. But in the New Testament, now you're not going to be seeing things as shadow. You're going to be seeing things as real. Hmm? I hope you know every human being has a shadow. So if you come in the night now, for instance, there's no light. Maybe there's light at the backside. And you came and stood by the fence. Hmm? If I know you very well, you come and stand by the back of the door. And the light casts your shadow. Hmm? And I look and I see your shadow. And I know you very well. I can call your name. I've not seen you. I can say, come, Oga. What are you doing there? Show your face. And then you appear. It's the same you casting shadow. I can tell you are the one by your shadow if I know you. Alright? So Old Testament is like the shadow of the man. New Testament is the real guy. So let me give you an example. In the Old Testament, Jesus existed. You thought he just came in the New Testament. No, he had been in the Old Testament. Behold the Lamb of God that was slain from the foundation of the earth. Foundation of the earth is when? It's in the Old Testament when God created the whole earth, when Adam now fell, and God now relayed the foundation again by a temporal sacrifice of taking a lamb and killing him. Where do you think that lamb came from? That lamb came from God, not from the Eden, not from the garden. That lamb is the lamb of God, it's Jesus. But he now came in shadow form. Hello, somebody. When Abraham went to sacrifice Isaac, and Isaac was tied and put on the stake, as he was about to slaughter him, God said, no, don't. Don't kill him. Now I know you love me. Now look around. You will see a lamb tied in the court. How did the lamb appear there? There was no lamb anywhere. Lambs don't live on the mountain. Lambs don't live there. They don't even have the capacity to climb. They don't go there. So how did lamb go to the mountain? Mount Uriah, where he went to do the sacrifice. It was not a normal lamb. It was Jesus that appeared. That thing that happened there was the death of Jesus in shadow form. God was watching the movie in shadow form. He was watching what he was going to finally do in the New Testament. So Jesus was sacrificed there again. I give you another shadow. When Egypt, the children of Israel left Egypt and they were going to the promised land, the Bible said that there was a rock that Moses struck and water came out of it. 
at another point, God told Moses to speak to the rock. Hello? And then Moses struck anyway, water came. But what God intended was when you speak to the rock, water will come out also. You don't speak to physical rocks. Go, go and try it now. Go and stand by the rock in your house. Or by the rock in the you say, water gush out. He's looking at you. Hmm? But now this rock we are talking about is not physical rock. First, realize that there was a time Moses struck the rock. And water came out. And then they drank. And these guys journeyed some other days and went beyond that very day. And this same rock still came and stood with them. And God said, no, don't strike. Because the first time you struck the rock, that strike in there is the first crucifixion of Jesus. When you strike him, he's going to be smitten and striking. When you have done that to him, once, you don't need to strike him again to get anything out of him. What you now need to do is from henceforth, speak to the rock. Whatever you say to me, it brings out. So, that rock is a type and shadow of Jesus. That's why you call him the rock of ages. It's not his cool rock. It's God, Jesus, that came as a rock and followed this guy. Do you know it was the same Jesus that came as a pillar of cloud by day and also came as a pillar of fire by night. It was the same Jesus that reigned as manna. Hmm? The same Jesus that reigned as manna. That's why he said, I'm the bread of life. It's the same Jesus that reigned as manna. And that's why God told the Israelites, He said, when you eat, eat this thing. Don't preserve it. Because what you're eating is not normal food. You're eating a human being. You can't put preservative in it. That's why when you come to the communion table to eat communion, the bread that is required for communion to be, the bread that is required as communion must be unleavened bread. What's the meaning of unleavened? Unleavened is bread that has no yeast inside because you can't add anything to the body the body is what has the capacity to add to you you can't add anything to the body of Christ so the bread required for communion is unleavened that's why it has no taste it shouldn't have yeast it shouldn't even have salt in it it should just prepare it with a dough with a floor like that put water prepared and say, that's the way the communion is served so when these guys took that manna and they went to go and preserve it, what they were trying to do was to create another system to add preservative to the body of Jesus. Eh? They were trying to add preservative to the body of Jesus. But God was saying, no, don't preserve this thing. What I'm giving you is type and shadow of the body of Christ. They were taking communion. That manna was communion. They were taking. Okay, let me give you an example. In the New Testament, you give your life to Jesus by believing in just one thing. Hmm? Salvation happens when you believe in the death, the burial, and resurrection of Jesus. Once you put your faith in what he did on the cross, you are saved. You confess with your mouth, believe in your heart, you are saved. Hmm? So, for a man to be saved, he has to renounce his sin. All right? And then when he renounces his sin, he is now translated into the kingdom of God's marvelous light as a new creation in Christ. Is that okay? In the Old Testament, there was also a process of salvation that occurred in type and shadow. Egypt was a type and shadow of sin. When the Israelites left Egypt, what happened at that point was a form of salvation. Hmm? The one called Moses who came to save them from Egypt was also a type and shadow of Jesus. In the New Testament, Jesus came to save us from our sin. Our sin is Egypt. So Moses came as Jesus in the type and shadow time to come and save the Israelites from Egypt. Egypt is what? Sin. Now the Bible says, he that believes and is baptized, the same shall be saved. So when you believe in God and then you receive Jesus and you are baptized you are saved so in the New Testament there is also baptism we baptize you with what with water by mansion not by sprinkling by mansion Jesus modeled it that was what John was doing he was baptizing with water Jesus even had to go and submit himself to be baptized so you will see that it's also a necessary requirement it may not be a compulsory thing anyway because the thief on the cross was not baptized though he made it to heaven 
so it might not be compulsory but it's necessary for a believer to have that experience because that experience helps you identify in the dead that's why when i baptize i put you in the water that thing is dead and burial the when i bring you out is now resurrection baptism by immersion is identified in the dead the burial and the resurrection of jesus so in the old testament they also had their form of baptism when the messiah called moses which is that person of jesus came and delivered the israelites from egypt the next experience was baptism and where did they experience the baptism at the red sea when that sea parted and they went through it it was baptism they experienced now the egyptians also pursued them and ran through the water to catch them the funny thing is that these guys had gone to the other side and god collapsed the water and he swallowed Pharaoh and his horsemen and every army of Pharaoh inside the water and they all perished there. What happens when you're baptized is that the old man and all the things that comes with sin, all the poverty, all the failure, everything that comes with Egypt is buried inside the water. The moment we are taking you out of the water is a new heaven that opens for you. Oh God. Well, if you, if you don't like teachings, if you don't like to learn, this is where the devil wields the biggest weapon. There, there's a guy who came into town yesterday for a program. So I saw it on YouTube, on Facebook, his arrival. When I saw it, I told some of my leaders, it was even around 11 or 10. I told him, I said, we are going there now. He said, we are going there. Let's go and see why people are destroyed. He said, let's go there. So I took some guys. We moved drove down there when we went i made sure that nobody saw me the crowd everywhere so i went to the back i went and stood by the window everybody say drama this is why a backlick is a poor city because you guys are ignorant when we are now teaching you this is how they are looking like but when they now bring you drama you'll be jumping learn something that will set you free the truth you know shall make you free. And like Jesus wept for that sheep because they were like scattered sheep without shepherd. That's how I wept yesterday. Too many ignorance in the body of Christ. Ah, that's why your problem will never end. They will prophesy to you today, lay hands, give you oil to drink. Eh? I've met things. I've seen things. So we come to me and say, Pastor, I don't know. Ever since I went, was it not a story? I heard of a story of a certain man who took his family one place like that and they gave them some things to drink, some assignments to do. After that, all of them started dying one by one, dying one by one. The man was even the first to die. The kids started dying. The woman began to look for help, started running, crying for help. Well, we are warning some of you, you will know. You think everywhere they build and they call it church is church. Not everywhere is church. Some places you go to, they are shrine looking like church. You go there as your leg is entering. That's how you are coming out with more problems. More problems. Some of the problem people are having is hand they laid on them. Wrong hands that was laid on them. That's why even the scriptures say, don't be in a hurry to lay hands on people unless you partake of them. That's why I don't lay hands anyhow. Not that anything will happen to me. But I'm careful and sensitive about this. There are a lot of priesthood is not something to play with. Priesthood is a very serious thing. Ah, let's leave it there. And because this generation don't want to sit down and learn the word of God, the Bible says they will not be given to sound doctrine in that day. They will rather go looking for who will tickle their fancy. So when you see a dramatizer, when you see a comedian who impresses you, that's what you want to go and watch film. Not to go and watch somebody displaying. But at the end of the day, how does that edify you? Am I making sense here? Yes, sir. Okay. And I heard, oh, I'm done with that one. I want you to show me another scripture. The one the Bible talked about, uh, that's in Luke, if I'm correct. It said there will be shakings in the heaven. Just type it. Have you gotten it? There will be shakings in the heavens and signs in the heavens and all that. You know? Ah. From today, you will have knowledge to disarm your enemy. Amen. Yeah. Do you know that Paul prayed that prayer? He said, His greatest prayer, the God of our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ, may give unto you 
the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him that the eye of your understanding being enlightened that you may know that's the greatest prayer in the bible paul prayed that prayer for the church and that's the prayer that i'm praying for you I, 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 it's not this one check verse 7 let me see I know that scripture is in there okay 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 yeah check verse go to, back to verse 5 let me start from there I show you a little thing of, on that according to the word that I covenanted with you when you came out of Egypt so my spirit remains among you do not fear so because things will be happening in this end time see the people who will not be afraid the one that God has commissioned his spirit upon and the one who are constantly marked by the blood the blood of jesus is what you must always have on your forehead every time like moses was asked to kill that lamb and put the blood on the doorpost of all the children of israel so that as that angel of death goes over the whole land of egypt that night once he gets to the house that is marked he will move once he gets the house in his mind if you're a good person and your house is not marked he will slay you because there's something about these spirits they don't know your name they don't know your face they don't know your name they don't know your face they only know these precious things like the oil like the blood do you know the funny thing is that if an Egyptian learned of what God said I went and took a portion of that blood and put it in his house. With all his bad doing, you know, as long as there's blood there, the guy will pass. Hey! Hey! For the continuation of this message, please play the next track.